Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf, here with another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. And today we're talking about golf shafts with a very special guest. Um, it is Spencer Reynolds. He is the brand and product manager for Fujikura. So, uh, Spencer, I kind of want you to join. First of all, thank you for joining. And then also further yeah. introduce yourself more than I could and tell us a little bit about Fujikura. Yeah, well, thanks, Drew. Um, you know, we always appreciate a platform to talk about our product and talk to golfers and fitters alike. So uh, thanks for giving us the chance to do that. And uh, thanks for the invite. We're happy to be here. Um, I'm happy to tell you a little bit about Fujikura in, in general. Um, you know, one of the missions of Fujikura has always been to make golfers of all skill levels better through superior product offerings. Um, we are a firm believer in producing the world's best performance golf shafts. And we, we deliver on that message uh, year in and year out. And we are continually driven by asking ourselves how we can be better. What can we do better? Um, we've obviously had a tremendous uh, overall longevity career. And on the U.S. side, you know, in the last since about 2019, we've kind of been living in the Ventus boom, which has been great. Um, we're really proud of that. And, and you know, not to not to be outdone, we've, we've done some more products in that category. We moved into Ventus TR. We have a new Ventus now. Um, we incorporated some technology into high performance iron shafts. So all that is just to say that, um, you know, we are really on a mission to make sure we have a product that fits everyone, that is offered to everyone, and that no matter the price point or no matter your handicap or skill level, if there's a Fujikura product in your bag, it's it's as high performance and high quality as it can be for that configuration. So that's... Yeah. That's where we're coming from, and, and I'm excited to tell you more about some product and stuff today. So, uh, again, thanks for thanks for letting us do that. Yeah, of course, and uh, and I think you know we've here at Second Swing we've certainly felt the popularity of the game. It's grown a ton, and I think where we're also seeing maybe a shift is sort of the interest and curiosity of golf shafts. And I think part of that's just the mass growth of the game, but I think there's also a sort of an increase in people really paying attention to sort of the specs or the nitty gritty details of their bag. Um, or in the past, or maybe if you're a more casual player, you might see yeah. more commercials about the club heads on TV, right? But, um, you know, as you guys are, you know, very much making an impact uh, on the shaft part of it, right? And the component there. So have you guys felt that impact? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I think that we're at an interesting point in golf right now where if you look across all brands, you know, everybody's making really good product. Um, and I think the differentiator of, of products of what makes a better driver for you is how you fit for that golf club. So essentially what, what performance characteristics match up best with your game. And and look, we're keenly aware of the fact that we're a component of the golf club. We're not the entire golf club. Our, our piece does not function without a club head on the bottom or a grip on the other end. And so for us, the most responsible thing that we can do is we just make sure that our piece of the puzzle is as consistent and as high performance as possible. Uh, but to your point, yes, we have absolutely seen an uptick in awareness about what shafts do, what they can do. Um, you know, and, and through our design process and through some of our offerings, you know, we've been able to increase the performance characteristics of a golf club that players are really, really looking for. So if you talk about that and let's say a driver, if we can improve speed and we can improve consistency and accuracy and and just overall performance of the golf club, you know, that's a really powerful thing. And we're certainly not the only part of the golf club that's delivering that to golfers, but we are we are keen to be a part of it and a part of that recipe that makes uh, makes a player better. So, yeah, I, I think you're you, you're spot on. There's a lot more interest than there once was. You know, shafts are a little bit of dark magic, right? So unlike a driver or whatever else, you can't really see the technology we're talking about. Now, some products we do have with some visible tech to it, but most everything's kind of under the hood and painted over. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a little bit challenging, and and we're also working in a product space where the components we're using and, you know, the materials that we're using are, are a little bit elevated in the sense of how do we, you know, describe pitch and pan carbon fabric materials to, you know, the average consumer. Right. And we try to filter that down on our end to, to player benefit, right? So we'll do the heavy lifting. We'll do all the, the engineering and all the mathematics on our side. And we just want to communicate to the player because of these factors, this is what we can offer you. And so we're, we're really player benefit driven in our messaging. Uh, we also try to keep things in a complex space as simple as possible. You know, we work with kind of simplified bend profiles when we talk about what a shaft does. We, we we try to map it out pretty evenly on a chart so a player can say, even if I know nothing about shafts, I kind of want to be right in this area. This is the product that fits you. So um, it is a little bit of a of a phenomenon to see the swell in, in interest for knowledge. The fact that you and I are even sitting here talking today, I'm not sure 
15 That's years ago point. if a podcast about shafts would have been you know that engaging uh, but there's obviously a, a want and a need for it and, and we're happy to support that yeah i think you made a great point about the sort of the being able to see the technology too because there are components mm -hmm. you know on a driver or even like a cavity back iron there are things that you can see on the club head um oh that is what's you know powering this the higher launch of this driver mm -hmm. or this iron but in a shaft it's really tough in most cases that you really can't see actually sure. the technology that's being uh implemented into the builds and so uh that's a that's a great point there and i think it doesn't again it doesn't um take away from the fact that the the shaft really does power uh the golf club and the, the golf shot a lot of times so um let's kind of run through the products or sort of i want to kind of have you sort of just run through the 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 products that are, are kind of available right now from Fujikura that golfers are going to see, sure. you know, in in players' bags per se uh, on tour, um, or you know, if they're going to go get fit for clubs right now, uh, maybe the Fujikura shafts that are going to be available to them in the fitting bay. Yeah, um, we we run the entire golf bag, literally driver all the way to putter, which is great, uh, and we we love to be a piece of every you know every part of the bag. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can kind of start with with the the most sort of popular I would say right now, and that's our Ventus line of product. Um, you know, the original Ventus Blue Profile launched on global tours in the tail end of 2018, and that came to retail in 2019. Uh, then, you know, we added a red and black profile to the original Ventus family. The reason we did that is that the blue is sort of kind of the, the center, center of the sphere, right? It's a, it's a mid-launching yeah. shaft, low-spinning shaft, um, and we wanted to book in that, that product with something that launched a little bit higher in the red and launched a little bit lower in the black. The one thing I'll say it's interesting about Ventus is even though we talk about Ventus red profiles being higher launching, um, it's it's not really a high launching family of product, right? So we would say that a red is a high launch compared to a blue and a black, but we do make product that is like, you know, driven to be higher launching, higher spinning product. Um, so when I think it's an important designation because people always say, well, I want to hit it higher, so I should play red and it's not going high enough. It's not necessarily a higher launching shaft, it's just the highest launching of the family. And there's there's some sure. cool ways that we can do that with, with what we call bend profiles. Um, the neat thing about Ventus is twofold. One, um, that was the first product to integrate what we call VeloCore technology. And really what that means is we're running a combination of materials that are very high tonnage materials the entire length of the shaft. Um, so you have pitch 70 material, 40 ton material, and previously we had featured kind of those high tonnage materials in certain sections of the shaft. Maybe that's in the tip section for more stability, or maybe that's in the mid section of handle section for whatever bend trip profile we're trying to create. But this was the first one we really ran that high performance material full length. And the thing that that does for us is it gives us this baseline, this really good stability platform to build off of. Now, once we have that stability platform, we can change bend profiles. We can change, uh, wow. you know, where we want the club to be stiff or soft. We can do all kinds of different things. And it's congruent throughout the set. So it doesn't matter if you're playing a, you know, Ventus Red R2 or a Ventus Black 7TX, the guts are the same. We're just adding different things or taking away different things and, and changing bend profiles to make that shaft perform mm, in a certain window. So I think it's important to note that, that that was kind of a key tech. And that's what was so successful about it. And that's why you see success across all three, you know, families and not mm -hmm. just, you know, one singular part. Uh, so from there, um, we want to do a little bit of an upgrade uh, and a little bit of a change, I should say. Um, so we looked at, at some data. So you can kind of see these Enzo cameras here uh, behind me. This is our proprietary motion capture system. It's a 10 camera system. And what it does is it analyzes exactly how the shaft performs all the way throughout the golf swing. So we can measure all kinds of things that we don't even really talk about. We can talk about uh, droop and kick and uh, twist and deformation and how the club moves in space. And when we zoom in on that very, very closely at a few thousand frames per second, if you look at the original Ventus Blue, one piece of feedback that we got from higher ball speed players is I love the smooth feel, but it's a little bit soft kind of in the handle section. And that is how that shaft is designed. You know, we, we see that players that have a very slow or deliberate transition from the top of their backswing uh, into the downswing, we see that a softer handle section allows them to load the shaft a little bit easier and get a little bit more feel out of it. Now, if you have a more aggressive transition and you're starting to really come down to the ball more aggressively, you need a stiffer handle section to kind of support that aggressive change in direction. Sure. So we look at original Ventus Blue, we put that on, on Enzo and we say, sure enough, that there is a section of the shaft that are higher ball speeds that is more susceptible to sort of bending and twisting. And that section is really 
kind of right at the top of the midsection and the bottom of the handle section. And so we address that and we say, okay, how can we make this better? Well, the easier, easiest thing to do is just add material to make it stiffer. Because of the location of that bend point, if we add too much material there, we start to create a counterbalance shaft, which is not at all what we're trying to do. We're just trying to stiffen that section. So then we start to explore more high-end materials. And this is where we talk about visible tech on a shaft. If you look at our TR family of products, you see this kind of checkerboard, kind of woven mm -hmm. pattern in the material. That is actually material that is overlaid onto the shaft and that's called spread toe carbon fabric. And what spread toe carbon fabric does really efficiently is it takes a lot of load and sort of force in a lot of different directions without being overly heavy. So you have a really lightweight material that takes a lot of stress and force. And what we find is when we integrate that into the shaft, uh, we see a slightly stiffer bend profile overall, but really what we did was we increased sort of the torsional stiffness about 10% from original blue in that section. So what players are left with is a profile that has a little more stand up on a more aggressive transition, but still a smooth overall feel. And that's what led to the whole TR family. So you have your original Ventus family of red, blue, and black, and you have your TR family of red, blue, and black. And each one of the TRs is a lower launching lower version of the original. So it just kind of fits a niche mm -hmm. of players that may like a certain bend profile, but just need a little more, a little more stiffness, a little more heft, whatever you want to call it. And those two families sort of lived harmoniously together. And then this year, uh, we decided it was time to, to update the original. It had been, you know, like since 2019, that's quite a lot of learning that we've done through material and Enzo analytics and a lot of other things. And we said, it's, it's time to, to make the original better. And so what we wanted to do is keep the same bend profile, right? So we wanted it to feel similar, with similar launch and spin, but we wanted to increase consistency and increase speed where we could. And what we did was we took that same VeloCore technology and we integrated a new third material to the bias core of the shaft to again, run full length. And what that left us with is a profile that feels very similar to the original blue, but it's faster, it's more consistent, and it feels a little bit hotter. And uh, one of the things that we got through consumer testing was the shaft didn't necessarily feel stiffer. It just felt a lot tighter, like a lot more complete, like a, like more, a lot more solid structure. Interesting. Um, yeah, and, and that's great. So we we consumer test things to death. I mean, that's what we do in this room right. all the time. We have a full-time consumer testing department, which is a little rare in the, in the shaft world, but it's something we're very committed to. We can look at uh, you know what, what a shaft can do on a robot. One thing we can't tell you is how it's going to feel, and that's where the player is so integral. And so when we make these high-performance parts, they may do what we want them to do on paper, but we got to make sure they feel really good too. And uh, so that's kind of where all this stuff comes from. So that's really the Ventus line. So that's original TR, and now we've got the new mm -hmm. profile to sort of replace the original blue. Moving kind of a, a tier away from that is our Martori X line. We have two profiles there. There's a mid-launch, mid-spin. There's a low-launch, low-spin. Um, really great family of product. Uh, there's also a hybrid that accompanies that product, and there's hybrids in Ventus as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then moving down from there, we have what's called our Vista Pro line. That's a flighted line. So essentially what flight is just going to mean is the heavier and stiffer the product gets, the lower launching, lower spinning, and the lighter and softer it gets, the higher launching and higher spinning. So it's sort For of sure. associated throughout the family. We run those all the way from, you know, 45 grams all the way to, to 65, R2s all the way to Xs. Um, so what we're left with is we kind of have the ultra premium pocket with Ventus, then we have kind of Motori X, then we have Vista Pro. And there's different price points associated with that. And we want consumers to know that whether they're in the lower price point or the highest price point, whatever we're making is an ultra high performance product. It's just that as we sort of go up the ladder, we have the freedom to integrate some more premium materials, change some design structures, push the envelope just a little bit harder. Uh, and that's kind of how we set up our, our wood line. And we've really done the same now with irons as well. So we came out with our Axiom irons last year. That's our first ultra premium iron from mm -hmm. Fujikura Composite America. That includes VeloCore technology, um, the same one that you found in the original Ventus and Ventus TR. And same idea there. We're, we're running that tech all the way through the bag. And we're getting the same benefits in irons that we saw in wood. So you see tighter dispersion, you see more consistent ball flight, um, you see higher ball speeds from certain players, you see better turf interaction, better feel. And these are all all things we're really keen in on uh, because again our mission is to make every golfer better but in the iron family just like the woods we also have our pro line of irons and our vista pro line of irons kind of follows the same cadence as woods ultra premium kind of a middle tier more of an entry-level product 
Sure. Uh, and then kind of mixed in with that are our Japan products as well. You know, we have uh, Speeder NX, which is a fantastic line of wood shafts that replaces Speeder Evolution line. We have two profiles in those, sort of a, a higher launching and a lower launching. Uh, and then we do wedges and putters as well. So it's it's a big catalog, but we try to break right. it down to be consumer friendly and that you kind of have three tiers in each in each family. And uh, we've been running that play for a while. We also color code our products uh, because we want fitters to associate what those colors do with launch and spin so they can kind of understand this is what a, a black profile, a blue pro profile, a red profile would do. Um, so again, the idea is to have a good breadth of product, but keep it simple enough that mm -hmm. fitters and consumers can understand it and work with it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, clearly there's a, there's a, like you said, a big kind of library there. Um, and if you're going to go into, yeah. you know, any of our uh, second swing, you know, tour van fitting bays, um, you're going to see just a, a, a wide spectrum of, of Fujikura options there that our fitters can, can dial in as well. Um, so I wanted to ask you one thing, um, just about this whole lineup. Sure. I know there's a, li a litany of products there. Um, I know when I mean, we talked a lot about Ventus and that's kind of the one that seems to get the most popularity out there but is there is there a favorite that you have that maybe goes uh unnoticed or is maybe underrated if you will um among among the product line yeah i would i would not say underrated but i would say new and that is we have really enjoyed watching kind of the the takeoff of the axiom iron family okay um that was kind of a new space for us i mean it was that product was in development for over two years um and a lot of iterations to get it to get it right. Um, and we'll, even when we launch the product, we have a relatively scaled down skew mix of what we have with our wood line. You know, we kind of just have a, a lightweight, a midweight, and a heavyweight. Um, and we just really wanted. To, we knew what it did from a testing perspective on our side, but we wanted to see what what the what the market would really accept. And we we just have really enjoyed the swell of seeing more and more of those sets go into play and hearing more and more about what a difference they're making for players. And this is not just a traditional graphite 75 gram iron. We're hearing this from players that are playing 125 X or players that have played, you know, steel their entire lives, mm -hmm. young players that are in their late teens and early twenties are switching to graphite. So, um, we, we have a lot of freedom in the design of graphite that, you know, maybe steel doesn't necessarily have, we can stretch boundaries a little bit with weight and flex and performance characteristics just because we have different materials to work with. And, you know, our, our sort of pitch has always been if if you're able to accept that and adopt that in your woods, you know, trust us to to do it in your your irons as well. So um, Axiom is still relatively new. We're only about a year in and we're excited to see the adoption rate and the, the curiosity level. Um, you know, traditionally graphite irons have been listed as uh, well, you know, they kind of they're draw bias and they go straight up in the air and they launch high and they spin a right. lot and they're lightweight. And, you know, they're for people that can't, you know, maybe have slower swing speeds and and we're trying to to push through that um with products like axiom and and it's starting to stick and, and that's really cool for us we're excited about it yeah I'm, I'm curious now i mean we'll see in maybe three to five years you know but there's certainly kind of was a stigma or maybe is still a stigma about sort of graphite mm -hmm. iron shafts and like you said you know they're the they're for slower swing speeds or you know they're for someone who might needs more launch and that's probably true in a lot of cases, but obviously there's the way you guys are building the Axiom and it can certainly benefit really anybody uh, that would like just maybe a different feel in steel. So, um, Oh yeah. And, and we're offering the traditional graphite player a great option as well. I mean, we're still doing a 75 gram option. Oh, yeah. We still have our Vista pro line. You know, we, we still have the traditional graphite there. We're just trying to, you know, push beyond that a little bit and, and take things to, to the next level. And what we found is we have a technology now that, um, has really vetted itself out as being able to offer players such huge performance gain. You know, we we want you to have that throughout the entire bag. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of almost. It's great we actually talked about that now because I'm. It's kind of leads me into sort of the sort of asking some about things, some fitting related, right? Fitting related kind of questions sure. and topics because mm -hmm. um, ultimately it's about giving the golfer better performance, as as you mentioned, um, whether that is through. Um, just a new shaft or whether it's an entirely new club or, or whatever it might be. But um, just from a broad perspective, why is it important for someone to make sure that they get both club head and shaft fit for their game versus maybe just going and grabbing a, you know, the club head that they think works for them based on, Oh, it's a draw bias and I need to hit a draw or I need to fight a slice. You know, yeah. why is it also important then to get that shaft fit too? You know, I would tell you, Drew, some of the things that we look at 
in our studio and fitting. Um, and I would encourage more fitters to look at when they think about shafts for certain players um, is, is there's not always a correlation between this is a high ball speed player. So they need the heaviest, stiffest, lowest launching product we make. And there's not always a correlation between the opposite of that as well. One of the things we take pretty keen notice of if we're fitting someone here in our studios, we look a lot at how they move the golf club and specifically kind of their transition speed. You know, they have a really aggressive transition to the ball. They have a really quick transition to the ball. Is it more slow? Mm -hmm. Is it more deliberate? And um, we, we pay really close attention to how the, the, basically the shaft loads and unloads during the swing, because how that happens can really dictate how the shaft is going to perform overall. So we can see players come in and have a higher launch angle with a stiffer profile like a Ventus Black than they do with a Ventus Red. And you say, well, oh, wait really? a minute, that doesn't really make sense. Yeah. And now that's a rare case, right? We don't see that often. But what happens with that player is you start to see the shaft maybe lags less. The shaft stays with the player more through the swing. There's more true loft and impact. Sometimes if the shaft kicks too early or kicks too late, that can change dynamic loft of the golf club at impact, and that can change your overall launch angle. So we look at products more of trying to understand bend profile that best suits the player. So we break a shaft down into a handle section, a midsection, and a tip section. And we say, okay, the handle section is between you know, soft, medium, firm, stiff, extra stiff. And we talk about the same in the mid and talk about the same in the tip. I, I go back to original Ventus Blue and even new Ventus Blue now. Uh, that shaft is very, very friendly, I would say, in the handle. It's kind of like a medium stiffness in the handle section. But then it gets progressively stiffer throughout the golf club. So what you're left with is a golf club that's easy to load, but stiff enough in the midsection to stay stable, and then very stiff at the tip section to keep any kind of off-center hits from going awry. So we're trying to always merge the best of both worlds so for us it really is the timing device of the swing um, we start to understand that flex is a little more associated with speed mm. bend profile is a little more associated with how they load and weight is a little more associated with tempo so it's not always just hey you're really fast you need the heaviest stiffest shaft that we produce you know we see players that are very high ball speeds play something that you know maybe softer in the handle section and very stiff at the bottom or you know, vice versa. We see high ball speed players that play a Vince's red profile because it is very stiff in the handle section. So that's the thing that we always kind of preach to fitters is you kind of get an idea of how they're launching the ball and how they're hitting the ball, but pay close attention to, to other things too. Pay close attention to how they load the golf club, how they move the golf club, you know, what they want to feel in the golf club. We can have players that are not even, you know, really high ball speed players, but they just prefer a shaft that has limited to no kick or movement in it. And that's why we make you know, Ventus Black all the way down into a 50 gram, right? And and we're just mm -hmm. trying to cover our bases because there's a million different ways to swing a golf club. Nobody does it exactly the same. And we want to be equipped with options of once you kind of get certain things dialed in, I like this bend profile, I like this flex, I like this weight, giving the player options to kind of to mess around with that. Yeah, that's very interesting that you brought that up because it, it kind of, there is sort of a, Again, we talk about stigmas as sort of the misperceptions maybe that are out there of uh, fast swing speed means, all right, well, if I'm going to go Aventus, it's got to be the black one, right? Or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm a slower swing speed and I need some higher launch, and you even talked about how the red, the Ventus red, isn't per se a high launch shaft. It's just higher than the blue and the black. Uh, so yep. there's yep. there's sort of that, that, I mean, that's kind of what you're doing now is sort of educating people on the different dynamics that there are within just the shaft fitting side of it. And so again, the importance of making sure you're fit for all aspects of your golf club. Um, clearly, you know, there's there's an impact to that you can be, that you can feel there. So uh, is there yeah, any Andrew, other- I don't wanna say just, oh, just whatever you think is, I, I never wanna say there, those, those rules that we sort of have in place about, you know, higher ball speeds play, stiffer profiles. I mean, that is a pretty general rule. We do see that play out. So I, I don't want mm -hmm. others to think right. you should just do the opposite of what you think is right. But just, you know, open that door a little bit more and just be open to the idea that shafts perform differently for different people. And, you know, even to the point of, you know, if, if a player's in a bend profile that doesn't feel right to them, they'll start to manipulate it and change it. It's one thing we, we see with testing, especially with, with better players. I mean, we, we can test prototype products and with with really elite players at high ball speeds, we really only get probably three to four shots. And the reason I say that is the first shot they're gonna hit, they're gonna get a sense of it. The second shot to kind of confirm it. And then the third shot to fourth shot, if it's not doing what they want, they'll start to adjust to it. So you can run a right. really elite player through a, a 10, 20 swing test 
and they have beautiful numbers and they look back at you and goes, I don't like it. And that that's kind of where it comes from is because at some point during that test, they had to make an alteration to make the club do what they wanted to do. So we always put a lot of emphasis in that first handful of shots. And then you'll see this too when you talk about ball speeds going up is again, they'll hit a first shot to get a sense of it, a second shot to confirm it. Third shot, they'll usually swing a little bit faster to see what it does. And if you'll see the ball speed kind of jump a little bit, and if the ball starts to go way offline, you'll see the next series of shots go back down in ball speed because now they're they're starting to steer it a little bit sure. and not swinging as freely. If they go after it and it does what they want, you'll start seeing ball speeds maintain and then go up, 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 up because they're just trying to see where's that threshold of how hard I can go at this before I lose it. And if they hit a comfortable cruising speed where they don't, then that's kind of where you find a winner. Interesting. Yeah, I guess that does make total sense, though, in how – you know, especially the best players in the world, right, are going to test something because they're these guys and gals are so dialed in to what they already play. Oh, yeah. They have they know the exact feel, and so uh, I, I mean, I've heard some tales about how like tough it is sometimes to get some of these players to change something. Um, I mean, clearly, if it works better and it performs better, they're going to probably do mm -hmm. it because they're make they're doing this for a living. But it's always a, a feel thing, for right? Sure. Something foreign. Um, in the feel and the look of something can can really make a big difference, um, and it's actually kind of Absolutely. that way with any golfer too. I mean, you you know you're, you're going in to get fit at second swing or fitting in, in the bay, and you know if it's a club head that you look down that's ugly, you're probably not going to want to play that. Or if you take the swing back and it loads yeah. weird and it feels weird in your hands, probably not going to want to play that shaft. Yep, no, I totally agree with you. It's uh, player feels a huge part of what we talk about, and and. Um... You know, the old school swing coaches will tell you feel isn't real. You know, when you're working on new things, you know, this feels laid off. This feels over the top. Um, but feel in, in our world is one of the most real things a player has, right? So we we rely pretty heavily on it. And we, we take it seriously. Right, right. Yeah. Is there any other, um, like, you know, maybe misconceptions there are about chef fitting out there? Uh, I We actually, it's funny because we had, um, it's about a general sort of club fitting misconceptions discussion with some fitters the other day and they had some interesting ones that were brought up um you know we talk about you know again that kind of that swing speed guideline and again that's what it is it's a guideline and not necessarily 100 percent of the players are going to fit into say you know extra stiff if they swing 110 miles an hour uh but is there any other ones out there that maybe um you know, there's a narrative of of golf shafts that uh, is not necessarily 100 percent true no, I mean, uh, no more so than, than what we touched on. Again, like I, we just always say that it, it's be open to different ideas when dealing with players in, in a shaft fitting. You know, be open to understanding that that shafts perform differently for every player and that we set up guidelines about how a shaft's going to perform overall. And, and those are, you know, inherently true most of the time. But, you know, if just just be aware, watch what the player does, uh, take what the player says seriously, mm -hmm. take their feedback seriously, and it will always lead you to a better conclusion. Sure. And then what I wanted to ask you about too, this kind of fitting kind of also product related as well. Uh, but cool. where do you stand on sort of a player getting fit for say Ventus blue? And then mm -hmm. while I want to play that, that sort of um, that feel and that product, you know, through all my woods. Right. I mean, there's probably players mm -hmm. that there's players that do that all with, with club heads, right. They play the same driver, three wood, five wood or, or hybrid, whatever it might be. Um, where do you yeah. stand on that? Do you recommend using the same shaft? I mean, it, obviously, it depends a little bit on the on the swing profile. Um, what do you think about that? Yeah, I I think uh, the driver, it you know, kind of view it as a specialty club in your bag. I mean, it, it's it's being hit in different conditions than every other you know club that you're going to hit most of the time. It, it's 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 kind of it, it's requiring different things than most clubs in your mm -hmm. bag. So even if you're talking about teeing off with a three wood, you know, your three woods also a, a turf club or a ground club the driver is really meant to be kind of swung and free and off, off the tee. Um, and where I'm going with that is because that golf swing and that setup and that shot shape and whatever that is, is, is driven a certain way. The player may want something different than that in the woods in their bag. Like, so we see, we just talk about Ventus. We can see players blend Ventus often. We can see someone play something like a black in the driver and maybe something more like a blue or a TR blue in the fairway woods um, or maybe blue to red or whatever that might be. But we also see plenty of players that display it throughout, right? So that's a little more player dependent. Um, when you talk okay. about, you know, woods and things like that, there's some other factors to consider. You're talking about turf interaction. You're talking about, you know, spin numbers that you definitely want to increase at times so you can get, you know, better landing angles, better descent angles and things like that. So it really just depends player to player. But uh, I don't have a strong preference on it either way. We see it go a myriad of ways. Um, 
oftentimes you'll see it run through the bag and the equally as common thing is you might see something a little bit stiffer, a little bit more stout on the driver because it's, it's more of an aggressive sort of 90 to hundred percent swing. They might back that off a little bit in, in the fairway wood category to get something with a little more launch, a little more spin. Sure. Uh, I'm good either way, but, but we do see it both sides. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's funny because a lot of these fitting questions, both whether it's, you know, you guys at Fujikura or Arthur is a second swinger, you can go to any of the, the club head manufacturers and, a lot of them are going to say things like it's player dependent because it's it, it's true that yeah. there's just so many ways. I mean, every for any golfer there is out there, there is that number of different swings out there too. So it's um, it's obviously tough on you guys to find to build something for every golfer out there. But obviously, Fujikura has a pretty extensive uh, set of options there uh, for players too. Yeah, we try to cover as many bases as we can. That's for sure. Um, lastly, here as we start to kind of wrap up. Um, Sure. Again, for, for players that are I mean, either new to the game, I kind of going to go back to some of these these golfers that may have kind of flushed in from COVID or, you know, they might be um, hesitant to, you know, maybe dial in those details of their bag or um, change out shafts or things like that. Uh, do you have like maybe a message for those golfers that are just, you know, they haven't quite, you know, they're, they're a little hesitant about changing their shaft or trying something different in the shaft side of things. They might've gotten a new club head, might've got a new driver, uh, but they, they haven't really thought much about the shaft. Yeah. I, I would say that anytime you upgrade to a next generation of product, there are changes, right? So anytime you upgrade a new driver, a new set of irons, new set, there are changes. Now there may be similarities. You may be the type of player that kind of gravitates to a certain performance metric of, I want a, oversized driver that does this, that does this, it's more dry bias, whatever that is. Or, you know, I play more traditional irons, I play CVs and, and players irons, and so they don't change dramatically. But there are changes to every iteration of product. So I would say that if you're going to make a change, a great place to start is, you know, with your current shaft, right? So you start to understand what the product does differently, but be open to the fact that just like there's a change in that product, there could be a change in the shaft that makes that new version of that product even better. So uh, I, my, my thing to players is just to be open to it. Uh, if you end up yeah. going back to your gamer shaft, that, that's fine. Um, you know, we, we upgrade technology and change things at a, a little bit different pace. I wouldn't say slower pace, but just a different pace than, than you know, kind of OEMs do with products. Um, we kind of work on a system where we're just tweaking and getting better and better and better. And then we kind of build up. And then when we feel like we're ready for a monumental shift, like something like a VeloCore technology or VeloCore Plus technology, um, then we kind of make a big jump. But we're always cautious of we're not if we ever create something that's very, very new, um, like a, it's its own beast, like we make it its own thing. Right. We don't want to confuse golfers too much. So we'll have these techno technology leaps, you know, every handful of years. But our goal is always just keep what we're doing and make it better and make it better and make it better. And those big leaps come from things like discovering new materials or discovering new ways to lay out materials or analytics or data. And those things mm -hmm. kind of reveal themselves in time. And one thing that we're cautious about is we put out product as we feel like we're ready to improve product. Um, we don't just say we have to have a new one every year, right? So you'll see yeah. some product families, you know, like Aventus family run for a long period of time before we're ready to make a change to it. And we make a TR and then we're ready to make a change to the original. We make this new, uh, new Ventus VelaCore Plus. So so that, that's my pitch, um, is that anytime you change equipment, there are changes. And just be cognizant of the fact that those changes could be better suited to a little bit of a tweak in your shafts as well. Yeah, yeah. Definitely something we see in, in pretty much every club fitting at Second Swing is um, if you're going to change some part of your setup, you know, it's important to at least test out how that setup, how that maybe club head uh, pairs with the shaft you're already playing. Yeah. Um, but, of course, most of our fittings, it is all about you know, fitting the club head, fitting the shaft, getting everything dialed in that you could possibly, um, any variable that For might sure. be needed to dial in. So, um, yeah, That's I mean, Spencer, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Spencer, thank you for taking the time here. Um, this is fantastic. And golfers, again, I'm going to remind you, um, to go get your clubs fit in 2024. It might be even the clubs you're playing now. That's great. We can still dial those in. And if we, um, see that, there's your maybe your shaft is not quite performing the way it needs to be, or maybe you're going to get a new driver this year. Um, there's a large spectrum of Fujikura shafts in our tour van that you can test out, put in your in your club, and you can swing it for yourself and find out um, which one is right for you and your swing. So, Spencer, thank you again for joining and providing all this information on Fujikura products. You're very welcome.
You got it, Drew. Until next time, uh, thanks for all you guys do for us and looking forward to chatting again. Awesome. Thanks, Spencer. Have a good one. All right, man. You guys take care. Thanks for everything. Appreciate it. All right.